I was going to do some live impressions of Spellbreak until I realized that not only did I not capture it in 60 frames per second, which this game does support on Xbox One, I also forgot to turn on the live commentary section or option on within my Elgato. So I'm just going to give you some regular footage of Spellbreak and kind of give you some of my thoughts and impressions about it. Overall, I think it's okay. It's been available for about 10 days now, I believe, from the time of this recording, at least officially in like a game preview state. I, I think it's okay. At at for the time being, there's nothing really in the shop for Spellbreak. It is free. You can buy a starter pack for $5, and I think it gets you an outfit and maybe some gold. There's not much to spend. There is a rotating store. Uh, there are items and costumes, outfits, blah, 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 that are in the rotation. But there isn't a battle pass yet. I imagine there will be one, because otherwise... It's kind of a steal, I guess, for what this game can give you if you're into that Battle Royale style type of game, which is what Spellbreak is. You are a Vowbreaker, which is basically an outlaw of sorts against other, I don't know, I guess your group is up against the Vow Keepers, but there's not really much of a story or lore, I guess, aspect to Spellbreak right now at least with what is currently available. So if you're trying to get into this for some, I guess, lore or story content of any kind, you're probably going to have to check, I guess, on the website for Spellbreak, which is really what the news tab on the, on the game menu is. This game is a battle royale in the vein of fantasy... Oh, I shouldn't say the vein... But basically, it takes the formula and applies a fantasy uh, magic style. And I think for the most part, the trappings are pretty well realized. You have spells, which is basically your regular projectile, and your sorcery. Which I guess you could say is an ability of sorts. Each magic class has a specific spell projectile. The Ice class, the Frostborn, will have long-range attacks. And the Pyromancer will have a simple fireball. The Tempest, or the Wind class, will have multiple, uh, sorry, like, multiple rapid-fire, like, ninja stars, I guess. And the Stone Shaper, there's more, like, there's Toxic and there's Conduit. And Stone Shaper kind of has, like, a earth-based shockwave, so it doesn't really go in the air. Only runs along the ground. They're all pretty fully realized. There are also combinations of spells that you can, you can mix and match. So if you are a pyromancer and a toxic, and you have a toxic gauntlet, and this is within the tutorial of the game, you can launch a fireball or a toxic cloud. We'll go with the toxic cloud because that's the example that the tutorial gives. You can fire the toxic cloud, you can cast a fireball at it, and it basically causes a massive explosion. Or if you were to use the flame wall, which is the sorcery for the pyromancer, and you cast a toxic spell on it, which is kind of like a scatter shot, you can basically create a noxious flame wall of sorts. So finding out which combinations of elements is kind of the, the key and trick to figuring out what spells will do or which effects will have which combination, depending on your loadout. There are also skill levels associated with each magic class, and skill levels are handled a bit differently. They're not performance-based. They are based off of how quickly you can get into the next circle. There's a ring, there's a storm here in the Hololands. The Hololands is basically the map that you play on in Spellbreak. And when you get into the next circle, you increase your skill level. 
So if I were playing as the Frostborn class, for example, the first skill level will give me the Ice Lance. When I fire it, it will leave a trail of ice that will allow me to move faster, 150% uh, speed. And you saw right there with the accretion, uh, I got myself another skill level. There are others such as the Toxic Cloud. I think it's skill level two or three. When I get into the appropriate circle that raises it to that skill level, my Toxic Cloud, not only do I become immune to that Toxic Cloud, but every time I walk through it, I gain invisibility for about two to three seconds or so. If I were to combine that with a secondary gauntlet, like the Pyromancer Fire Gauntlet, I do not get any of the skills associated with that, which is probably done, I think, for balancing reasons, which is good, because if you were to combine two different class sets and then you were just switching and between different elements every single time, probably really messes with the balance and design of the game. So you only get access to one type of, of skill levels, which is the main one that you would pick at the beginning of each match. You can see on the minimap right now, at this point, my teammates are outside of the range of the minimap. And even though I can see them in the game world, they do not show up in the minimap, which is one thing I don't really like about Spellbreak. Another thing that I don't necessarily like about Spellbreak, not so much that there is friendly fire. I think it's fine that there is friendly fire in this type of game. But what is a bit frustrating with Spellbreak is more of just how chaotic it can get when you get in those final circles. The visuals are, they're nice. They're not like dirty or anything like that, but it can be a bit too chaotic when the action really picks up and it's really difficult to coordinate or just find out exactly what is happening on screen. Another thing that's a bit, I don't know, maybe something that they can fix. In Apex Legends, if you have uh, one of your squad mates is firing a weapon, you'll kind of get like a little, um, basically a muzzle flash, as it were, around their icon. You don't really see anything like that here in Spellbreak, unless you are watching or looking at them from a distance. And if they're casting a spell or a sorcery, or I think even activating a rune, you will see their name basically blink and flicker. Which is kind of, kind of annoying to figure out if they're actually engaging with someone or if they're just trying to move around the map. There is uh, chat support if you're playing on console, which is almost necessary, if not downright essential if you're playing in squad modes in the squad uh, game type mode because it is next to impossible to ping. Pinging by default is done with the left analog stick by clicking in, which you know is also your movement. And I sometimes find it's a bit too easy to click in that stick on accident. You press and hold to indicate danger or you just tap it once to highlight an area. But aside from that, there really isn't anything else that you can do with the pinging system. So it's a bit limited in that front. Not really a whole lot you can do with the pinging here. And in Warzone, and, but of course in Apex Legends, definitely much better. Warzone, obviously not as good, but I prefer Warzone to this because at least it's, it's better, I think. I mean, not that much better, but I think it's better than how it's implemented here. You can tag items. You can see in the lower left, by the way, underneath each player's name, you do have, you know, quality of gear. There's common, which is white, and goes all the way up to orange, which is legendary. So it is nice that you can just see that from the onset, as well as what type of skills, uh, not skills, what type of magic class you are which is definitely handy for needing to upgrade a certain type of gauntlet, for example. The game plays all right, but 
just kind of looking at it or trying to get invested into it, there's not really much going on. The world of, or I guess the map of the Hololands takes place in a bunch of ruins, maybe some mountain regions, maybe one area might look a bit haunted compared to another one, but it's relatively silent and kind of lifeless. There are only 42 players, when you're, at least when you're playing in squad, in squad modes, I don't know if it's still 42 players in duos or solo. Maybe it'll change in the future, but I find that player count to be a bit too small given the size of the map. Not that the map is like bigger than any other type of Battle Royale style map, but I think for this type of gameplay, there is, there's quite a bit of nothing going on. If you're looting, the game is just slow and boring, and then when you do eventually get into, into combat, it just gets way too chaotic when you're really up in there, up close and personal. From a distance, it's, it's pretty fine, but when it gets up close, it, it can be tricky to figure out what's going on. And I don't recall if this is a match against bots or if it is an actual an actual match. The game does the thing where if you play like your first your first match or whatever, it's going to be up against bots, so you'll probably get an easy win. And then it puts pits you up against real players after that. I mean, aside from the lore being um, you know, there's vow breakers and there's vow keepers and maybe one named character of sorts, at least from what I've seen, there's there's not much else to see. And there's no battle pass yet. You don't really need to spend gold right now because you can get gold by mastering uh, your different magic classes or just by leveling up. I, it, it's okay. I, I haven't been following this game too closely, so I don't exactly know what's going to be in the what's going to be in the works for this game in the future. But I feel like at the same time we I've seen a bit about this game and haven't seen a lot at the same time. Most of this gameplay and And that might have been a conclusion. Yeah, that's the conclusion of the match. Um, what was I going to say? Man, I'm sorry. I've been, I know I'm kind of rambling on. I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, and I'm trying to get back into the... Into the thick of just, like, creating videos once again. It's all right. I think the gameplay hook is nice. Yeah, this actually might have been the like the first or second match that I've been in, cause uh, just barely got up stone shape or rank. It's not a bad game, but there's not really anything in the vein of a carrot on the stick that's gonna keep me playing. And I also feel a bit bad because while it's for the most part, mechanically sound. I think the way that the skill levels, how to upgrade those is a bit weird just by going into the circle, not necessarily performance-based. There's not really any spoken dialogue. There's not much life to the game right now, which is probably the biggest complaint that I have um, against Spellbreak. And with all of the other games and stuff currently out there, I think you know, launching games as a service, trying to be another unique Battle Royale style game is tricky, especially right now. Um, you know, you still have stuff like PUBG, Fortnite, Apex, Warzone. And Spellbreak does offer something different. But I think there is, there's still room to grow, at least personality-wise for this type of game, but it might not have launched with enough. And I feel like as the days and weeks go by, as soon as we get into, like, next-gen consoles and all that, 
I'm probably not going to remember Spellbreak. I, you know, time is already limited as it is, and, you know, it's cool to play Spellbreak when you're really doing well, but the lack of being able to be revived after you get exiled, that there's no, like, respawn beacon or a gulag, any way to really get back into it. The, the lack of stuff like that in, in Spellbreak, the lack of, you know, just small little quality of life improvements, such as the minimap, your, your teammates not really being within view of the minimap if, if they exit that little ring. It's, it's fine, you know, it's, it has a good foundation set up, I suppose, but it just needs some life. It needs a bit more personality than... than okay at best. And that that's a problem with these types of games. You need to have a strong impression on the offset. And at least for Spellbreak, I'm just... I don't think this is cool. I just think, oh, that's a... It's a unique little twist, but it's not something that makes me go, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with this. I think it just maybe came a little bit too late to get invested in with everything else that's out there. But I'm not gonna give a formal review on it because I don't know what they have in the future, but if I were to kind of score it right now, it would probably be like a three. It's, you know, from gameplay perspective, I think it's all right. Production values, audio, and I guess just some sort of background or reason for all of this. Not really anything there. And I'm basically just going to end these impressions right now because I'm rambling and I need to get back into the groove of things.